Thank you, uh, Chairman Cox, and good afternoon. Uh, just to reiterate the point that Supervisor Cox just mentioned, the presentation from the UCSD researcher uh, outlined that if we had not taken the quick action we did at the time we did, uh, the specific number that they cited of deaths that we would be at as a region was 12,790 as of today. Uh, when you adjust that for the deaths we have had, uh, that would put us at 12,660 deaths uh, that we have avoided in San Diego County because of the actions we've taken. Uh, to put that in further context, that is the population of the entire city of Solana Beach. And so it is hard as you are working through uh, a global pandemic where you uh, aren't seeing overwhelming in your healthcare system, you aren't seeing a shortage of ventilators, uh, you aren't seeing those types of things to have a, a disconnect between the actions we've taken and the success that they have yielded. But I think that we all have to remind ourselves daily uh, that the situation that has played out uh, in many countries around the world and in many cities here in America is one that San Diegans have avoided. Uh, because we started early, because we took quick action, but also because we had widespread community support. Uh, we had a community uh, that joined with us together in these efforts to stay at home, to physically distance, to wash your hands, to now begin to wear face coverings. And as we begin to move forward and continue to move forward uh, into uh, this month of adapting and opening and changing, uh, I want to quote the words of Mayor Daryl Steinberg, who today I think summed it up really well when he talked about opening. He said, the question is not if we will open, it's not when we open, it's how we reopen. That is what is going to determine our success. And so as we move forward, we want to be clear, thoughtful, we want to continue to have actions based on the data that we share daily with you. Uh, but to do otherwise and to move forward irresponsibly would be throwing away all of the tremendous sacrifices that's been made and all of the tremendous work that's been done. Uh, we know people are anxious. Uh, we know people are in economic distress. Uh, we know that there is a desire to get everything back up and running. Uh, but if we don't do it the right way, we could have a second wave uh, that, that could put us back in a horrible position. And we're working tirelessly to try and avoid that. Uh, that's why there is a phased approach to opening up. Uh, that's why when we talk about turning the dial, it is gently, uh, it is in small incremental steps, uh, and it is with a constant eye on the data that we see in front of us. The governor announced some loosening on restrictions on specific businesses that we expect to go into effect Friday. As a county, we believe we are prepared to move forward uh, with those. Those were some of the limitations being lifted around curbside retail, particularly things like uh, sporting stores, toy stores, bookstores, things like that. We think that is appropriate. And the governor said there could be additional flexibility provided to counties to move a little further in stage two. We do not yet have what those conditions need to be, uh, nor do we have what those entities uh, might be that would be able to be opened. Uh, we're told to expect them uh, around Thursday. And so when we get those, we'll be in a better position to know uh, if we as a county are going to qualify and meet and what they are. Uh, but we'll continue to wait for that. But we are moving forward with the assumption on Friday, uh, consistent with the governor's guidance, that we can make an initial step uh, into stage two uh, on Friday. Yesterday, I mentioned there would be three uh, mobile testing sites that were up and running today. This is a partnership with the state of California. Uh, the state is providing this as a resource. We think it has the capacity initially to do close to 800 tests per day. Yesterday, we predicted uh, they could have some hiccups. Uh, some bumps in the road, some difficulty with their first day of operation. Uh, those predictions, unfortunately, uh, turned out to be true. Uh, they did have some logistical challenges, some staffing challenges uh, in getting those up and running. We appreciate the speed at which they tried to provide this resource to San Diego, and we ask all San Diegans to continue to be patient uh, as the kinks get worked out, both with the website and signing up, uh, along with the execution of how those tests are operating. Uh, we do know that there were hundreds of tests successfully conducted at those three sites today, and we expect every single day uh, to see continued progress uh, in smoothing that out and in increasing the efficiency uh, and continuing to make it better. Uh, also today at our board meeting, our board unanimously approved the county uh, appropriation of $5 million of CARE Act money uh, to provide health care or child care vouchers uh, to our health care workers, first responders, employees of essential businesses. Uh, I think one area we have to spend considerable more time focusing on as a region is the availability of child care and educational opportunities as we begin to reopen our economy. Uh, there's a lot of groups working hard on this, and we look forward to continue to engage. Uh, but today's action, unanimous action by the Board of Supervisors, is a positive uh, step forward in that area. Next, we will briefly update you. We'll pull up our T3 
uh, slide here to update you on our efforts around testing, tracing, and treatment. Uh, here you can see that today we're reporting 2,306 tests reported. Uh, again, we have a goal that we've set of 5,200, but this is not written in statute or in requirements. It is just an initial goal we have set for ourselves as a floor for what we would like to get to daily, uh, over 63,000 tests total. Uh, we have increased, uh, increased our tracing capacity. Yesterday to today, we're now at 160. Uh, the county has received well over 1,000 applications and is in the process of background uh, and onboarding, so we expect that number to continue to grow. And again, the 450 goal is just an initial goal. Uh, it's just something to organize around getting to. The, the real number uh, when we get to there will likely be much greater than that, but this is to get us moving uh, in the direction of, of, of striving daily to increase our number of contact tracers. Total investigations performed to date is now over 5,000. We also have 189 individuals that are currently receiving treatment for their coronavirus uh, positive test in an isolation room in a county public health motel room, uh, brings our cumulative to 567. Uh, the state testing I mentioned, I want to put this slide back up again. Uh, just for information, if you would like to go on and uh, register to make an appointment for testing, you see the website there, lhi.care slash COVID testing. Uh, there are the three locations that are there. And again, every day we expect this process to get smoother and the numbers yielded from these testing to continue to increase. Uh, you also can call the number that you see on the screen right there, 888-634-1123. Into today's reports, today we are reporting a total of 140 uh, new positive tests. Uh, this is out of the total of 2,306. Again, it is more important to focus on the percentage of positive as we see our testing uh, continue, to, uh, continue to trend in the right direction more consistently at those higher levels. That is a 6%, uh, which is tracking uh, down a little bit from yesterday, but right in line with what we've been seeing uh, over the past week or so. Uh, hospital census ICUs are down to 135. Uh, total hospitalizations holding pretty much steady at about 354. Uh, these are COVID suspected and related, uh, both in ICU and the orange, and then uh, non-ICU COVID patients in the blue. If we go to the next chart here, you will see total COVID-related uh, cases in our hospital uh, there at the bottom in the 354. Non-COVID-related patients above it in the teal color uh, brings us to 3,500 total. And again, you can see the dotted line at the top, which is current hospital system capacity. Um, and that concludes my section of the report. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Wooten for her public health officer's report.